death. And guess what? They're still going to come back in the kingdom and be, be rulers right along with the rest of the nation. Rest of, yeah, the rest of the, the nation of Israel. You know, so no nation is going to creep in and trying to get this understanding when you got Israelites that can't get this understanding. That's outrageous, man. But the nations, hey, what do they, why do the heathen rage, right? Why? Because it's wishful thinking. Vocab and all of this nonsense, it's all wishful thinking. You ain't going to make this yours regardless of how you try to twist the scriptures, man. You're not going to make this yours. If you're not an Israelite, you ain't got a shot, man. That's right. Go ahead. That was it on that, right? Yeah, that was it. All right. What I call for? Isaiah 40. It's one. Isaiah 40, verse 1. Right. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your power. Mm -hmm. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. That's right. And, and how do you comfort the people? The people are comforted by words. You know, that's 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 the number one comfort, right? When you need when you see comfort, it's usually words. If you want somebody to tell you everything gonna be all right. But you want more than that. You want the person to also tell you how everything gonna be all right. You know, it's easy to say, yo, everything gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying? No, it's better when you say, listen, everything gonna be all right. And this and this and this is gonna happen. And it's gonna make everything all right. Those are called details, all right? When it comes to our faith, the most high is giving us details, man. The how things is gonna go down. So it's a comfort, it's a comfort to us. Okay, right? And cry unto her that her warfare, yeah, her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. Right, our warfare is accomplished. The Lord had, the Lord, the Lord, the Heavenly Father has been at war with the nation of Israel. He said, wherever thou goest, my my wrath. He said, he's, I'm going to send my wrath after you, and I'm going to send evil unto you. That's what he said in the book of uh, uh, Judges. Why? Because of idol worship. You know, which is the number one thing? Idol worship. Breaking the first commitment, lack of faith and idol worship. So now the Heavenly Father said, well, guess what? That warfare is over. So when, when the Heavenly Father is at war with Israel, not only did he put us in captivity, he also withdrew his knowledge from us. You know, and he left us bare, naked, for the nations to come out and have their way with us. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel, that woman, we were stripped bare naked. And, and tossed out there and be like, all right, go ahead. You want to be a whore? Go ahead. Go ahead and be a whore with the nations. Matter of fact, I'm going to put the most, I'm gonna, he said, I'm going to put a spirit on, on a terrible nation, right, to really use, abuse you, and destroy you. Since you don't want to be with me, you don't want to come back to me, I'm going to let you love these nations and see what happens. Then the nation of Israel, we, that's what we did. And we got what? We got effed up. So now we like, all right, listen, we, we ready. It's like, the woman wants to be a whore, you let her be a whore, she get destroyed. And then she remembers how good it was when she, when she was with her husband. And she's like, you know what, I'm ready to go back home. So the, but the most has merciful, because most men wouldn't take that bitch back, right? I know, I know brothers would you, hey, you, I want a woman to be with me. And she said, no, she want to be a whore. And I let her go and be a whore. And after she's used and abused, now she want to come back to me. Hey, I'll be like, nah, fuck that. But see, the Most High is not a man. The Most High is on a different level. And his mercy is wrath. So he said, as his wrath is, so is his mercy. So he still said, listen, I'm going to bring you back, but I'm going to clean you up. And now you're going to do it my way. And oh, not only that, I know I can't leave it up to you. So now I'm going to put my thoughts into your thoughts. I'm going to control you and make you do the right thing. You know, that's when the scripture says what? The laws shall be established in our hearts, man. And that's what we want. We don't want autonomy. We done, we done with doing our own shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That hasn't worked, man. We like, Lord, please control us. Please, please control us. You know, please make us do the right thing, man. Be, you know, right. Verse three, or in verse two. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. That's right, so we received double. You know, that's why this captivity was so long, man. The Heavenly Father looked at all of that madness we did in Judges all the way down. He said, okay, I'm gonna add all of that bullshit, right? And then I'm gonna put that in the time frame and you, that you're gonna spend in this prison called what? Babylon, the virgin daughter of Babylon, AKA these United States of America. I'm gonna send you to that prison you're going to serve that sentence, man. 
And that's why that sentence was so damn long. Because it's, it's an accumulation of all the bullshit that Israel has done to the most high, man. To your whole body, you know So now we good. We like, okay, we learned our lesson. We better go back home, right? And now the Lord has said, okay, only did, and the elects is doing it. You know, but the two thirds, they want to continue to be in that mindset and into that lifestyle. They want to continue to be whores. They're gonna be destroyed, man. By thermonuclear missiles, man. That's what I want. First. Now that's it on that. Uh, 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 Philippians 4 and 7 about you. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 And the peace of the Most High Which passeth all understanding The peace of the Most High oh, man. The peace of the Most High it's, it's, The reason why we get understanding All understanding Is because the Most High is at peace with us When the Most High is at war with you You're not getting no understanding You're getting effed up You're getting destroyed You're getting, you know, you're getting your behind handed to you right? But when you get this understanding and knowledge, that's why brothers have to understand, even though you go through trials and tribulations and, and, and you do get, you know, effed up and whatnot, the fact that you're still able to understand these scriptures means that it's different. It's not wrath that he's putting upon you. It's just what? He's trying your heart, which is different. The most I try you and wrath is two different things. You know what I'm saying? So understand that so you don't be like, oh man, he's not done. No, he's dealing with you. The word deal means to what? The word deal means to divide, to split. All right, so when you split or cut, so when you, when you, when you cut something, it hurts, right? But dividing, dealing, judgment, that's what it's about. You being judged right now so you can be delivered later. It says, um, Read again. Verse 7, and the peace of the Most High, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Hamashiach Yahushai. Right, so, so it's going to keep our hearts and minds. It, it goes back to that stability through Yahushai and Hamashiach. So it's because we believe in Yahushai, Romans 8, uh, Romans 10. Uh, it's not 8. It's Romans, it's Romans, it's Romans, it's Romans 12, Romans, it's either 10, 10 or 8, 8. I think it might be Romans 8. Try Romans 8. Yeah. Chapter 8, verse 8. Hey, it, says, it, say, it says, so that. Uh, no, 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 it doesn't even sound like it. Try uh, 10 and uh, 10. You got a precept up? Yeah, bring it up. Uh, this is uh, Baruch. 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 Thou hast put thy fear in our hearts to the tent that we should call upon thy name mm -hmm. and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, but thou hast scattered us for mm -hmm. reproach mm -hmm. and a curse and to be subject to payments. Like, like that brother you were talking about earlier. Yeah, that's the spirit. You read that because another thing you were saying before you came up here, Aki, was uh, how we have to consider the past and look up the things of the old. And that scripture said that we have considered the iniquities of our forefathers. We, and we acknowledge those things. And because we acknowledge those things, that's why we are here doing what we're doing right now. We have no choice because we understand in that acknowledgement, there's reincarnation. That was us. That's right. You know, so we have to do this to get right. Yeah, it's like, absolutely. I mean, we, we had to, it's a must. And the good thing is we given, we given a grace period to do that. That's what grace is about. You know, grace is what? Grace is, grace is a time, it's a period of time that's appointed to, uh, to the saints, to the perfection, it tells you that, to the perfection of the saints. Meaning what? It's the time between when you wake up to deliverance where you can get your shit together. That's what grace period, that's what the grace period is, which is a favor. Okay, because a lot of Israelites won't, won't get that grace. They won't get that opportunity. So when people say we're in a grace period, the Christians don't understand what that means. To them, the grace period means uh, the occasion to go ahead and eat pork and, and <laughs> eat shrimps and crabs and all that bullshit. Yeah, definitely grace period. This is a period of time beyond a due date during which a financial obligation may be met without penalty or cancellation. There you go. There you go. So it's, it's, a, it's a grace period. Like, and it's crazy because even when, when you're paying bills, they got something called grace period. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So is that grace period, when, 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 when your bill is due on the first and the grace period is from the, uh, all the way to the 10th, is that grace period the time for you 
to to not get your shit, to not pay your bills, to, to do worse? Or is it the time for you to get your shit together? In Christianity, they believe the grace period is the time for them to do worse things and still get away with it. I got some more. It says an extra time you are given to pay money you owe without losing something or paying an additional amount. That's right. In an example, you have 10 day grace period in which to pay your insurance. <laughs> there you go. grace period is the seven years of tribulation. That's right. That's your grace period to get right before right. you got to pay up. That's right, right. absolutely. And that's what we, we, we were given. That's the reason why we understand, listen, as much as you would love for all hell to break loose that's today and, and salvation to happen today, it won't, you know, brothers that have to, brothers that have to awaken, have to awaken, right? Because the Lord could have ended this thing if the Lord, the Heavenly Father had set it up. He could have ended this thing way back when, but then we wouldn't even have a chance. We'd all, we'd all be destroyed because our deeds are wicked. Right? It tells you that in Colossians, as a, matter, as a matter of fact, let's get to Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. It tells you that our deeds, our deeds was, was wicked, man. So if, we, if the Lord had just decided to just judge the earth prior to the awakening, no grace period, we all get fucked up. Excuse my language. You got it? Yeah. Colossians, go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, Colossians chapter 1 and 21. And you, there were some... Oh, no, uh, read again. Colossians 1 and 21. And you, there were some time alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Right, the Lord is speaking to the elect. He's not speaking to the two thirds. He's speaking to the elect. He's saying, "You, at a certain point in time, you were you were alienated, meaning you were outside, you were foreign to to your own knowledge, to your true com to your true uh, nationality, and commonwealth." And it said, "We were enemies in our works against the Lord." Go ahead. It says, "And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled." Right, but now has he reconciled? So, to, you know, reconcile means what? To bring back into like a friendship, right? Meaning, we cool again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The beef is, the beef is over. Go ahead. Uh, verse 22, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and, unbl and unblameable and reprovable in his sight. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 23, if he continue in the faith, grounded and settled, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Right, so the thing is, is that it's through the blood of Yahweh Shah that you're able to be reconciled if, but it says, if you continue in the faith. That's the thing. That's the one caveat. You got to continue in the faith. Because if you stop believing, then all them old sins go right back on, on the plate again. And who wants to deal with that? Uh, Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. That's right. Go ahead, can you read that again? It's like, it's like Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, mm. that we may obtain mercy mm -hmm. and find grace to help in time of need. Right, definitely. I mean, the thing is, you don't come out shy. You know, you, you got to come boldly. You know, it's all about, you got to be aggressive with the truth, you know, uh, because... When we was in the world, man, we was bold in the world, man. You know what I'm saying? We was doing some, everybody was trying to find their way, you know, everybody was trying to, it was, you know, we knew it was a doggy, you know, doggy, you know, eat, 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 uh, what's, what's the same? Doggy, 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 doggy dog, yeah, doggy dog world. Yeah. So we knew, so you had to, you just had to go ahead and get it, right? So that was the mindset, just go and get it. So well, that's the same thing, the more, listen, being, you talking about the, the, the mind, the mindset of, of hustling, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, I'm not gonna say it's a universal, it's, it's a mindset that works in the spiritual realm as it does in the physical, physical realm. You gotta hustle in this truth, man. You gotta, you gotta go get it. You know, when you go, you study hard, you put in the work, that's, that's hustle. You know, you go out, the highways and the edges, the pilgrims, brothers are doing, brothers are spiritually hustling, brothers is, you know, that's, they're bold with it because brothers want it. And if you don't want it, stay your ass home, right? The Lord said, you either all in or you are all out. No lukewarm, nothing, man. Hey, what was that? Who's, I don't know. Who said it? Be scared to go to church? Yeah, that was that. Was a lot of people you. said that. Yeah, I see you that, Dre. Because the church, they won't scare you. <laughs> it's all friendly in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right, though. That's, that's right. I mean, 
you know, we're not, we definitely don't, the Lord said he hasn't given us the spirit, the spirit of fear. So that's why we boldly come out here in the highways and the edges because we know, hey, listen, what's the worst that can happen, man? We, we already seen, we don't heard any, everything, anything. And hey, dumb, dumb, new. And I'm like, can any of these motherfuckers, you gotta ask yourself, can any of these motherfuckers right here deliver you from dumb nuclear missiles? Ask like, like, ask yourself, ask yourself, you know, people that, oh man, why are you doing this? We're talking shit about you. You ask yourself like, oh, all right, cool. So you think, you think what I'm doing is crazy, but I know the missiles are coming. Can that, can you save me from these missiles? And you know that that person can't do it. So guess what? I ain't listening to shit you gotta say, bro. You know what I'm saying? Wait, reset. Yeah, bring it up. This is our Revelations chapter 3 and 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Mm -hmm. I will thou were cold nor hot. Verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, mm -hmm. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and that's a good analogy that the Lord used because we don't eat, you know, we don't eat lukewarm food you know when when whatever food you got is lukewarm it's, it's not hot it's not cold You're like nah dog, I, gotta, I gotta do something i gotta either you know put this thing on the, on the uh, i can't wait really to say microwave but you know do microwave okay. but in the oven yeah. right you know what i'm saying but but that's what that's what you want you know you want both extremes so being hot meaning what you got to be bold about this truth man you got to be aggressive about this truth man all right This is Romans 10 verse 10 For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness mm -hmm. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation Right, so the first stage is you got to believe in your mind unto righteousness And then the scripture says what? I believe therefore have I spoken yeah. So first you believe And if you truly believe, listen man When you truly believe, you're going to speak I mean it, that, that's just, those things are always linked the believer always wants to speak because he feels like he's got something to say. You know what I'm saying? That's why when you get this truth, what's the first thing you do? You start speaking to family members, friends. You're like, yo, I got something to say, man. There's somebody going to get this. Bro. There's somebody going to hear this. <laughs> so you, I got to say this, man. You telling these niggas around you, thinking that, you know, you just got to let it out. And another thing is, when you come into the truth, you stumble upon that scripture that says, uh, we're uh, if you don't speak this word unto them, then their blood is on your hands. That's right. So when you first hear that, it's like, oh shit, I need to wash my hands off of everybody else. That's right. That's you right. Know? That's I don't right. want no blood on my and that's what happens. You know? Right. That counts as well. And the zeal, the excitement, you know, because you 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 know, listen, of course, man, we're compassionate people. The word compassion, calm means what passion means suffering. Meaning we 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 tend to be, that's why you see Jake loves suffering, you know, Jake love being around that that grimy you know, even when Jake is making good money, yeah. Jake still want to go back to the hood. You know, he got to go back to the streets. <laughs> he got to walk around with, with the niggas he grew up with because he wants to be a part of it. It's the, the struggle. You know, Jake likes being around the struggle. So when we struggle, you know, we have an affinity for the struggle. But the problem is our affinity for the struggle is misplaced because you're only supposed to struggle for the truth. You're not supposed to be out here struggling in the streets and struggling with these niggas. You know, because that struggle, that Black Lives Matter struggle, that's bullshit. That's all East, that's all, all, all it is, it's an Edomite Amalekite setup, man. That's a fake struggle. All right, Martin Luther King, that was a fake struggle. Mark Michael Mix, that was a fake struggle. So you gotta get with the right struggle. The right struggle is what? It's bearing the cross of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, man. That's right. Which is what? He's told you, he told you. My yoke, my cross is what? Do the well, man. Come out, go out there and teach. Teach, man. That's that's the that's the struggle. Teach until I come down and, and blow this place to smear the rings, man. Yeah, occupy till I come. Man. That's right. That's the struggle. Not going out there in the streets feeding, feeding the streets. Like you some Nino Brown nigga, you know, with some fucking turkeys and shit. Alright. Not necessarily. Yeah, he's playing, man. There's something about being a damn cop. Let's go. That manly giving authority to an Israelite man. Tell me, hey, that's gonna stop soon. Man. That's right. All right up. Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. Hmm. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in thy bones. Yeah, that's when Jeremiah got his feelings. Because, you know, Jeremiah, listen, Jeremiah was a beloved prophet. Most I love Jeremiah. 
And you know, hey, listen, the more the more the most I love you, the more you're gonna go through some shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just how it is. So Jeremiah was going through some, he was going through some shit, man. Because he was dealing with Israelites that came out and said, listen, we know that Yahweh, that the heavenly for the time, Yahweh, we know that Yahweh was dealing with you. We know you're a prophet, but we ain't trying to hear none of that. We gonna be doing what we doing. Our women are baking cakes to the queen of heaven. We doing good in here in Babylon, son. We making, you know, we making money. So all that righteousness you talking about, we ain't listening to that. They actually said that to Jeremiah, we ain't listening to you and the Most High, we good. They try to kill him. So, and then, and then the Most High, you know, would put Jeremiah through some trials and tribulations. So Jeremiah came to a point where he was like, man, fuck all this, man. So he's like, man, I ain't gonna push this word no more, man. I'm gonna fall back. But the scripture said what? It was heavy in his heart. It, again, it goes back to that belief. Talks that, that about belief. Being hurt, hurt right. The daughter of his people. Right. So, so he got in his feelings, you know, in which he was a man, just like we we getting our feelings. We getting our feelings. But the faith of the Lord and the Spirit always brings us back to our calling, which is pushing his word. You know what I'm saying? There's been some time where I'm reading this, I'm, I'm trying to read. But I've been so fucked up, excuse my language, I've been going through, and I'm like, man, I don't feel like reading today, man. You know what I'm saying? I call the book. Why? Because I'm in my feelings. Do you know what I'm saying? But guess what? When you get over that, you go right back to reading. Because you just, what else you gonna do? You know too much. You know too much. There's too much going on. You gotta push this word to your left. So you put your feelings to the side and keep doing what you gotta do. What? Right? I'll start up at verse uh, seven. I got a question. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're just, just listening. Oh, you just listening? I appreciate the uh, yeah, yeah. information. We're, we're both Jewish. We want to hear what you're saying. You say you're Jewish? We're asking how you Jewish. Oh, man. Hey, man, that's, 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 that's bad. That's bad because, yeah. see, the reason why we're here, I don't know if you, you took a look at that sign because that's the first thing. That's the main thing. We The main attraction is that sign. You know, the reality is, as a matter of fact, let's get, let's get a revelation. Let's get revelation. The spirit is switching up. The spirit is switching up. Yeah. Let's get Revelation. It's Revelation chapter oh, yeah. 10. Yeah, no. yeah, let's get both of them, man. And, I, and I'm going to bring this out, and I want y'all to tell me what y'all think about it, all right? I ain't even, I'm not going to say nothing. Go ahead. Here, listen. It's Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Right. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, right. but thou art rich. Mm -hmm. And I know the blasphemy of them that which say they are Jews and are not, mm -hmm. but are the synagogue of Satan. Okay, so what's what's going on? Why? Why? Why is the Bible saying that? Why is the Bible saying that he that Lord? Why are you saying I know the blasphemy of them that say they're Jews but, but are not? So the Bible is saying you got a group of people in this planet that call themselves Jews but but they're not. We want to say that here. We want to say that they're Jewish. They think they feel better about themselves, but they're really not. They're lying to themselves. And they're lying to you guys. You no, guys are the real Jews. We're really. the real Jews. We practice. We got our mitzvahs. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's, that's fine. There's, there's no that's, real Jews. That's fine. There's, where are the rest of the tribes? There's, there's, there's no real Jews. Where's there's no real Jews. Hold on. It's just the people that appreciate John Ford. If you're religious, if you're religious, I believe that we're all. I don't care if you're Jewish. Hold on, man. That's that, that, that's that brood talking, man. That's that. That's that brood talking, man. You're nice. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't care if you're Jewish, Muslim, Christian, whatever you are. What kind of Jewish person speaks like that, man? You know, the people in Israel will be very yeah, upset. Yeah, they don't speak like that. I've been, I've been to Israel. I mean, that's they, fine. They, they speak very dogmatically. John 4, about, let's read the scripture, John 4, 22. John 4, 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. Mm -hmm. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Mm. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So according to spirit and truth, the Jews just come from one tribe, the tribe of Judah, right? These Jews encompasses three tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's right. But then you have all these other tribes, all right? Forget what this says on this side, because it's not going to make sense to you. Yeah. Where are these tribes? If you're the Jews, where are the rest of the tribes at of Israel? I, I believe that we all came from Israel. Because Jew is only I, one tribe. I believe we all came from Israel. We're all the sons of Israel. We came from the same place, but some people tried to get between no, no, no. us We're and not all to break the sons. Up, We're not all the sons of Israel. You're thinking of Abraham. That's, that's that. who we are. Yeah. No, no, no. That's we're all the that's sons of Abraham, yeah. but we're not all the sons of Israel. Only these people are the sons of Israel, the sons of Jacob, according to the prophecy. According to prophecy and history, in comparison.
comparison with the Bible, your people don't fit the prophecies and the truth of who the real Jews would be today. That's why we're out here. That's right. Because who you are, you have an identity crisis, just like our people have an identity crisis. That's right. That's our right. people think they're That's black, right. they think they're Native American, Hispanic, Latino. Just like your people, you think you're Ashkenazi, Hasidic, French, Dutch, South, South, uh, Southern American, Tri-State American, you know. Came somewhere before that. It sounds like we're all yeah, yeah, no, no. Here's in a nutshell, real quick. You guys are the Edomites, and we're the Jacobites or the Israelites. That's right. We come from we come from Jacob. We both come from Shem. We both come from uh, Abraham and Isaac, but the split is after Isaac. We have the same mother. All right, but you guys come from Esau, and we come from Jacob. The Edomites. The e East Jacob means. Uh, Jacob means supplant. I'll tell you if you got a second. Jacob means to supplant, and Esau means wasted away. Which, if you get Genesis 36 and 8, Esau's name was changed to Edom. All right. Remember one thing about the Bible: names had meanings in the Bible, unlike today. Hold on, brother. You gotta listen. Just listen. Real quick. No. Well, technically, no, because in order to be a human, hue meaning color. That's right. Right. So we're not all equal. No, we're not all equal. We're not all equal. Okay. We just, we're not. I don't know why you had a problem with that. It's the truth. If we, if we were all, excuse me, if we were all equal, wouldn't there be more other races getting MP, MVPs and winning the Olympics? There'd be other people getting gold medals. If we were all equal. Even even our people, Kush, Kush got the long distance. Jake ain't seen it. Kush, and those might be Jake's, for all we know. Let's get the scripture, and then we're going to wrap up. This is pretty simple information. You can go look this up. You don't have to believe what we're saying. Just go look it up. Hey, can I say this too? Go ahead. Like, wait, remember what we said earlier about the struggle, right? Take God infinity with the struggle. It's like, why are you trying to oh, be a part of their struggle? You, you trying to be a part of their struggle. You here to try to help them when their confusion you you has question? played in our confusion. Yeah, I like your song, Genesis, let me just tell you, let me just give you your nationality before you leave. Go ahead. Genesis 36 and 8. what it means. That's the Esau and Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Right, it says Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. Your ancestors dwelt in Mount Seir. If you go look that up on Google, it's a bunch of rocks up in the, in the, uh, in the mountain. That's why you guys call yourselves Caucasian. All right, because your ancestors go back to the Caucasus Mountains in Georgia, Russia. That's why you call yourselves Caucasian. That's how we can relate and filter things in history and facts to the scriptures. Mount Seir, when you look up Seir in Hebrew, Shayar means hairy. All right, it means hairy. This is another way that we can identify you. Not all of you are hairy, but the majority of you are. Now Esau's name changed to Edom. Edom, when you look up, if you, do you guys know Hebrew? No. How do you say red in Hebrew? Do you know? I don't know. I, uh, it would be uh, Adawam. Or how do you say it in Edom? Uh-huh. I don't. All right? And that's how you would say it in Yiddish. Yeah, like blood but in Hebrew, Hebrew, no, no, no. Blood would be Dama. Blood is yep. Dama. Yep. So Esau's name changed to Edom and it's red. I don't want, which means red. The reason why they named him red is because when the baby was born, when you read it, when your forefather was born, his blood was showing forth through his skin. He didn't have any pigment. That's right. It was, when he came out, he said, I Shashua. His original name, which is Esau, which means wasted away is he. What was wasted away? Your pigment. All right. When he was born, everybody was dark skinned at that time until so your ancestor was born. Yeah, and he called him Edom, and his name was Red. That's why some of your people call themselves Rednecks. You call yourself white, but you're not really right. This brother's sweater is white. All right. Parts of your shirt are white. What's really you guys are red. All right. It's the blood that shows forth through your skin. All right. Which is really blue until it hits the air, of course. All right, but it appears to be what? Red, you appear to be red. If it gets too hot out here, what it happens turns, to your skin? Red. It turns red yeah. because you guys are the biblical Edomites. And we're the biblical, look at all the tribes. These are all the, remember I asked you where, if you're the real Jews, where are the rest of the tribes? We don't have a real answer for that. Well, we, we have a real, real means true. See, we say we're the Israelites, and you know why we say it? Because we got the prophecies. We know all the other tribes. This is Zebulon, Judah, Benjamin, that's Levi, Ephraim. All right, and the rest of the tribes, Gad, Reuben, and, Manasseh. and we got Manasseh. This brother's Manasseh, who's actually visiting. He's That's from right. the tribe of Manasseh. That's right. All right, now That's the right. people over in Israel, they just say they're the Jews. That's one tribe. 
But what about all your brothers and, and your sisters? <laughs> they, we even have a, we even had a sister Dinah, you know. But she's she's her tribe is according to Jacob. She's just a Jacobite. That's right. She's from the Holy See, you know. We'll see her in the kingdom. Hey, that's something else to look forward to. We'll see our sister again. That's right. All right. We'll have a conversation with our brothers about that about that, that encounter too, you know? Like what was going through your mind? You know, because we're gonna have these conversations in the kingdom. You actually be able to meet, meet Levi. You guys, if you have somewhere to go, it's fine. You know, we'll be able to meet Levi, be able to meet Benjamin. You know, we we'll actually be able to meet Judah, meet Reuben. You know, we'll see these men, be able to have conversations with these men. These are things that accompany salvation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 you get Genesis 25. Oh, oh, real quick, Malachi 1 and 4. Oh, man. How could I forget? <laughs> quick shooter, bro. Malachi 1 and 4. And we're the prophets, by the way, of our, all these all these people, the so-called Negroes, the Blacks, Native Americans that you know. Out of all those people, we're the real prophets of all those people because we understand the prophecies. And if you can read Malachi, let's read one of these prophecies. Malachi 1, the first chapter. No, just go to the point. Yep. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4. Read it as loud as you can. Yep. Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. Edom, it says, Edom says that they're impoverished. Go ahead. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Yep. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. Go ahead. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. Right, Edom, another nickname for Edom is the border of wickedness. A famous Edomite or Idumean is Alexander the Great. His line goes back to the Idumeans when you read his history. The scripture says after he was gone and he left his power to his four generals, wickedness increased on the earth. Under uh, Ptolemy, Lysimaeus, Seleucus, and uh, Cassander. All right, those are his four generals, and those are all, those are all other Edomites as well. Go ahead. Idumia is a Greek word for Edom. They shall build, but I will throw down. Yep. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. Right, here comes the point. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Right. Mm. Keep going. Verse 5, and your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Did you read 1 and 3? Uh, no. Read, yeah, read 3. Yep. Malachi 1 and 3. And I hated Esau. Read that again. And I hated Esau. Read it again. Malachi 1 and 3. And I hated Esau. Now, we didn't make this up. All right, you know how people say the Lord is all love and that the Lord doesn't hate? The Lord told the prophet Malachi that he hates Esau. Any, anyone that believes in the Bible will say to themselves, I need to figure out who is Esau because I don't want to be hated of the Lord. Well, it just so happens it's Yahweh the Edomites. You guys descend from Esau. And if you think you don't, you better pray that you don't descend from Esau. Because if you do, the Lord's curse and indignation, curse and indignation means righteous anger, is upon you forever. When you look in a Bible dictionary, you look up Edom and Esau, it says it's the only nation, a race of people, didn't receive any promises from the Lord. That's right. Because ultimately they're going to be destroyed and burned in the kingdom. But all the other nations, they are going to have promises. They're going to have their lands. They're going to be happy. They're going to enjoy themselves. But the Edomites, you're going to be gone forever. That's right. When you read the book of Obadiah, the prophet Obadiah, he prophesied the Edomites' demise. Yeah, the Zondervan Bible? Yeah, the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, you know? What's that scripture? Do you have any more questions or are you just listening?